children and welcome to our Sunday school online class. In our last class, we did the fifth beatitude. Happy are the merciful, for God will show mercy to them. Mercy is not just forgiveness. Mercy means active sympathy, a compassionate service. We, as the children of God, must hunger to serve others unselfishly. Children, watch this image of two rings. Can you identify which is real ring or fake ring? It is so difficult to find out, isn't it? How will you know it is real gold or fake gold? Both look so alike. The false gold looks so pure from outside, but the material use is different. Children, can you tell me what expression is this? It is a happy face. This expression? Yes, a sad face. And this? A crying face. We have people who wear masks with these different types of expression. Mask helps them to hide their true self. Such type of people are called two-faced. Actually, they are scared, but they show that they are not afraid. They tell lies, but show as if they never lie. They cheat people and they show they are very trustworthy. Such type of people are called hypocrites. Hypocrites have two faces. One they wear in public and one they wear at home. There were many hypocrites during Jesus' time. Jesus wanted to transform their way of thinking and their behavior. Children, in our today's lesson, we will learn on the sixth beatitude. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Happy are the pure in heart. There are different sorts of people. The first sort of people were those who pretended to be kind. That was a face they showed. In reality, they were greedy and selfish and only gave money to the poor who show off. That was their other face. But Jesus tells us that they should give with a generous heart. The second sort of people whom Jesus called actors pretended to pray to God. That was one face. In fact, they only prayed when other people could see them. They were showing off. That was the other face. Jesus tells us we should pray with a humble and contrite heart. The third kind of people, they kept fast and put on sad cloth and looked gloomy to show others they are holy. On fasting day, they pretended to go without food so that people would think they were holy. They did not care about the real reason of fasting. They were not true followers of God. So those who live by integrity, choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun, fast or easy, and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. Jesus tells us that persons of integrity are one-faced. There is no pretense. They don't hide their shortcomings. They strive to live the way God wants. People of integrity bear good fruit. They will see God. Good fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. 
Have you ever heard of a mango tree that produces apples? Have you ever heard of an orange tree that produces bananas? Mango trees will produce only mangoes. Likewise, orange tree will produce only oranges. So children, Jesus teaches us that we will know a tree by its fruit. The fruits we bear are the product of how deep we are within ourselves. Jesus tells us that only those persons will be happy and bear fruit who live in integrity, means be yourself. So children, hypocrites are the ones who lack integrity, like the Pharisees and scribes who practice religion to show off and did not live according to what they thought. They are like beautiful marble stones, but are filled with bones inside. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. People who follow all the rituals, like the saints, are pure in heart. For example, like the Saint Teresa of Child Jesus, Saint Maria Goretti, Father Damien, who saw God in the lepers of Molaika, Archbishop Romero saw Jesus in oppressed and exploited people of El Salvador. Pure in heart are one-faced people, not actors or hypocrites. There is no pretense, no pride. They do not hide their shortcomings. The pure in heart have the best intention when they deal with others. They know that man sees outward appearance, but God sees the heart. They purify their thoughts, words and deeds to the word of God and depends on the grace given by God to walk in purity. They surrender to the will of God. Their prayer, God, take my heart, transform me, and use me for your glory and the good of others. Children, let us now look at the life of Saint Maria Goretti. Saint Maria Goretti was born October 16, 1890 and died July 6, 1902. Her feast day is July 6 and she is the patroness of youth, young women, purity, and victims of rape. Maria was beatified by Pope Pius XII on April 27, 1947, and was canonized three years later by the same Pope on June 24, 1950. Maria was born in the Ancona province of Italy, where she lived until her father moved their family to Fiere de Conca. Unfortunately, shortly after the move, Maria's father died of malaria, leaving her mother and several of her siblings to work in the fields to support themselves. Maria remained at home to tend her youngest sister, Teresa, and cook, clean, and sew. Though their situation was hard, the Goretti family was close-knit and loved God. The family continued to work hard for several years until July 5, 1902, when Maria sat on the steps of her home sewing and her family was tending the surrounding fields. That was when 18-year-old Alessandro appeared and pulled her into her home, where he attempted to rape her. She cried out that it was a sin, but he persisted. When Maria fought back, he began to choke her. She was able to say she would rather die than submit to him, so Alessandro pulled out a knife and stabbed her eleven times. Maria was gravely wounded and attempted to reach the door, but Alessandro stabbed her three more times before fleeing the scene. When her family returned and found Maria bloodied on the floor, they rushed her to the nearest hospital. Maria survived the night and, before her death the next day, said she forgave Alessandro and even hoped he would one day join her in heaven. Later, she died while looking upon an image of the Virgin Mary and holding a cross to her chest. Alessandro had been captured shortly after Maria's discovery, and he admitted he had attempted to sway her into sinning with him several times before. He was sentenced to 30 years in jail and remained unrepentant until one night when Maria came to him in a dream. She offered him lilies, which he accepted, but they burned in his hands. When he awoke, he admitted his sins and repented. When he was finally released, 
He lived the rest of his life under the order of the Friars Minor Capuchin, where he worked as a receptionist and gardener. He was also present in the audience when Maria was canonized by Pope Pius XII. Saint Maria is called a martyr because she fought against Alessandro's attempts at sexual sin. However, the most important aspects of her story are how she forgave her attacker and the miracle her forgiveness produced in his life. Saint Maria's remains can be found at the crypt of the Basilica of Nostra Signora delle Grazie Santa Maria Goretti in Netuno, where her body is kept in a statue which lies beneath the altar. Depictions of Saint Maria often show her with wavy hair, dressed in either white or farm clothes, and often show her holding lilies, which are symbols of purity. To Children, we are now entering into the most important part of the lesson. I now invite you to keep everything aside. Take a comfortable posture. Let us be calm as we prepare ourselves to listen to God's word. Gently close your eyes and now slowly breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. As you are completely aware that Jesus is with you at this very moment, Jesus always loved to give us messages by sharing us examples from nature, tree, sheep, grapes in vineyard, birds in the air. Open your eyes, children, as we will now listen carefully to the word of God. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. A healthy tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a poor tree bear good fruit. Each tree is known by the fruit it bears. You do not pick figs from the thorn bushes or gather grapes from bramble bushes. A good person brings good out of the treasure of good things in his heart. A bad person brings bad out of his treasure of bad things. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children, gently close your eyes as we reflect on the words we have just heard. Children, open your eyes now. Imagine you are in a field in which you can see tall mango trees with strong bark bearing big and ripe mangoes. By the side of the field, imagine thorny bushes with no flowers and no fruits at all. Would the farmer expect to find mangoes on these stunted bushes? Will a poor tree without any fertilizer for growth bear good fruits? How is it that a healthy tree can bear good fruit? It has to be nourished by fertilizer and taken good care. Children, close your eyes. Without fertilizers, the tree cannot be healthy and it will not bear good fruits. In the same way, what kind of fruit would a good person produce from the treasure of his heart? By his good works. If he does good works, he will bear good fruits. And also, what would a bad person produce from his heart? Bad deeds. Children, what type of fruit do you bear? Good fruit or bad fruit? So children, we will now pray to God, asking him to give us the grace to bear good fruits in our own lives. O oh God, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit of the Living God, 
Thank you for this, another chance and day you have given to me. Help me to remove all the doubts and unclean thoughts that is inside my mind, heart and soul now. Let your power be relieved in me, O God, and create in me a clean heart. A pure heart give unto us, O Lord, and never allow us to put on ugly masks. Amen. Let us sing this hymn together. Change my heart, O God. Make it For some activity. First, write down the six Beatitudes in your exercise book. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Draw yourself as a tree with branches and leaves coming out from the top of your head. After drawing, write below the tree which you have drawn, this symbol. Hypocrisy bears bad fruit. Integrity bears good fruit. You can also color the tree. After completing your activity, send this activity to your Sunday school teacher. In today's lesson, happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We learned what makes a human heart or mind pure. Jesus says, Unless you change and become like a little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Only integrity bears good fruit. People who lack integrity, Jesus calls them hypocrites. Thank you dear children and I hope you all enjoyed the class. Stay safe. Bye-bye.